Shalom, Shalom. This is Church of Yahweh Shah 144. We're back at it again, all right, on another feast day, which is the final feast day in the Levitical law, all right, Come according on. to the old covenant, which we're in the new covenant now, because we're under what? Grace, which is soon to be over. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh. I want to give double honors to the elders that have been teaching us the right doctrine in Israel and salutations to the Malachium that are teaching in truth and sincerity. All right, because that's what we are. We're a nation of kings and priests, man. And we shall reign supreme in the earth under Yahawashai and Malak the Word. And the Heavenly Father's raising up the tabernacle of David, man. All right, this is not a joke. The two sticks have come together, man. You got the Aparayam, which is Ephraim, and you got Yahawada, which is Judah. The two sticks have come together, man. In this body, you understand? The Heavenly Father, through the Spirit, showed us that the two sticks have come together, man. So we understand that we're at the end. This is it. This is the end or be all. And we're at the Feast of Tabernacles, which Feast of Tabernacles is Chag Saka. Chag means feast, Saka is tabernacles, yeah? Or plural should be Sakayam, okay? Because Yam makes a word plural, all right? So yeah, the brothers are out here. We're gonna basically bring out precepts concerning the feast day, why we keep the feast day, and you know, what it symbolizes, you understand? Because the scripture tells us three times in a year should we appear before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's a must. The other feast days were additions, like uh, Hanukkah was rededication, and um, what's the other one? The one giving out gifts in the 12th day. Yeah, Param, Purim. Param, yeah. That's the that's the last feast day which really that that's not really a heavenly father sanctioned feast day that's more of like something that we did just to thank the most I you know we gave gifts to each other to celebrate him delivering us out of the hands of these filthy Edomites all right you understand but the three main ones which all of you should be observing because they're all symbolic is the Pasach which is the first one which is the first month on the 14th day that evening because the day begins in the evening you understand the second one is the Pentecost which is a continual 50-day count and in order to achieve that you need a new moon crescent as we shown you in the blowing of trumpet without the new moon crescent there can't be a count can't. and it's a and there's only 30 days in a, a, a designated month so in order to do a 50-day count you know what it's, it's continued you can't use the moon to count the Pentecost why because the moon goes missing sometimes. So it's a continual sun up, sun down, sun up, sun down, 50 days. That's why it says what? Seven Sabbaths plus one. Oh. That's the second feast day. And that shows you that the Sabbath don't go according to the moon, man. It's impossible because there were two great lights. You had what? You had the moon, which was made on the fourth day. And you have the sun. You understand? And regardless of the moon being visible, it was still counted as a day on the first day up to the fourth. You understand? So the Heavenly Father showed us right from the get-go that what? A Sabbath is determined by sun up to sundown, sun up to sundown, sun up to sundown. And the sun appears every day, man. Tell him up. The moon only appears in the month when it's supposed to. That's on the 1st, the 7th, uh, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th, uh, 27th, Salak. You understand that's when the moon makes his appearances man and then three days that it wasn't visible in the beginning of the creation it goes missing it's not hard to be understood all this just to lead up to the feast days because without that you won't be able to keep the feast day on the correct day you understand now some of you might say oh we're trying to be specific but when you read the scripture the heavenly father said he wants exact epas what does it mean to be exact it has to be on point man so for those brothers that are saying they're trying to be technical, they want to be exactly this. Well, the Heavenly Father said exactly that. Because when you read Amos uh, 8 and 5, he's talking about them falsifying the balances. He said, nah, don't falsify the balances. 
I want exact epas, man. I want everything to be exact. Don't cheat the congregation, man. But people want to be cool now. They want to be seen of men. They want, the, you know, the praise of men. So they just, you know, they just go with uh, the format that's uh, uh, accepted on a, wild, a wide scale. But the Heavenly Father has never been about the majority of the masses of people. As you can see, we only got 13 appointed men here. Which really, that's the spirit. Because 13 souls came out of Egypt. You understand? That's what people don't realize. And on the breastplate, there's only 12 stones, man. So if 13 people came out of Egypt, because don't forget Ephraim and Manasseh out of Joseph, Dan included, plus Levi, that's 13. If you count everyone else, starting from Reuben all the way down. So who's missing on the breastplate? That's another mystery which we're not going to disclose now. But anyway, yeah. let's go back to the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, let's go to the precept in Leviticus. So Shama Shawan, get Leviticus chapter 23 and start from the top. Yeah, bring it and, uh, out, bring it out. Right, this is the this is the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verses 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashara Allah. Speak unto who? Speak, Speak unto, unto the, the children, children of Yashara Allah. Allah. Now notice the brother said Yashara Allah. That's another mistake they're making in Israel. Okay? Now you may have been told that Israel is pronounced Yashara Allah. That's wrong. Okay, it's two words, actually three. Yah, which is he, Shara, which is Sarah's name, which means to contend, and Allah, which means power. He oh. contends with the power, and as a prince, he prevailed. That's, right. That's when he received that title. Oh. Yasha doesn't mean prince. Shah means captain or prince, but not in a sense of the son of a king. Because when you go in the, uh, the Paleo Hebrew, it doesn't say Yasha is prince anyway. So that whole Israel that you're saying is the prince of the power is absolutely wrong. He said, as a prince, thou has power with Yahweh because thou has contended with the power and has prevailed. And that he contends with the power being the definition of Israel, which is Yashara Allah. Yashara Allah, not Yasha Allah. Yashara Allah. He contends with the power. It fits us perfectly because we're a contentious people, man. You know, like they say in Ghana, Yentijai. We, we like clashing heads. That's why the Lord told Ezekiel, I made your forehead hard against theirs. Because right. they're going to fight against you. He told Jeremiah, one, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 18, And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail, man. Because like I said, the two sticks have come together. Because now we know who Ephraim is in the camp, and we know who Judah is. Okay? Because Judah is what? The bloodshot red. The carbon core. Okay? The garnet red. The wine red and emerald is what? Ephraim. Beryl. The two Beryl. sticks coming Beryl. together. Uh, Beryl, Selakia, Beryl. Beryl. Not emerald. Beryl is the color of Ephraim, man. And one, uh, uh, the vice captain in the camp, uh, Adan, aka Garazan, aka Mapataza, aka Aparayam, before he joined the camp, he actually saw two chariots, man which were adjacent each other, and they were positioned exactly how the stones are meant to be positioned on the e-pod, oh. man. So what do you have to say about that? So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we know what's going on, man. Oh. You understand? We know what is going on, because Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is showing us everything through the spirit, and patience, and perseverance, and faith. We're being shown this little by little. We've come a long way. Oh. Okay. But anyway, so read that precept, man. Right. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verses 2. Look it up. Speak unto the children of Yashara Allah and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning what? Concerning, concerning the, the feast of, of the Lord, Lord. Right. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Right. Even these are my feasts. Right. So the Heavenly Father gave us feasts days all right Let's carry on reading right six days shall work be done but the seventh day is the sabbath of rest right so notice it first goes into the sabbath so it's showing you this the sabbath cycle is different to the feast days mm. before he even mentioned feast is talking about sabbath now six days man 
with or without the moon is still a day you still go to work you still do everything it's still counted as a day you understand carry on I, I know. right and holy convocation ye shall do no work therein right it is the sabbath of yahweh in all your dwellings there you go right verse 4 these are the feasts of the lord even holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their season. In their what? In, in their, their season. In their what? In, in their, their season. season. Now how can you tell a season without a crescent? Mm. The crescent tells you what season, you understand, begins. Because in the uh, springtime, you need the crescent to tell you when the spring begins. In the uh, winter time, you need the crescent to tell you when the winter time begins. In uh, autumn, you need the crescent to tell you when uh, uh, autumn begins, man. And me and a brother was reasoning over there and we were saying they count September as the ninth month. But that don't, don't make, even make sense because the word sept is actually a French word which means seven. So it shows you that if seven is September, what's going to be number one? March. And that's when spring begins, man. So when you see your crescent in March, you know that's the beginning of the new year. And then you start your, your counting of the, the Hebrew calendar. It's not hard. The Heavenly Father is not a complicated power like some people make him out to be, you know. Like the mad scientist that's got so many equations on the board. And he's got the whole class confused, man. The Heavenly Father ha has something called simplicity, man. That's why he gave us what? Simple laws. He even told us the laws are not grievous. Right. But they're teaching a doctrine which is grievous, man, right. to the soul of men. Right. And a lot of people are suffering because of this. Right. You know? But you would be a fool to carry on suffering. Because really, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father has given you a mind of your own. He's given you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And the reason why the nation is destroyed is because of what? A lack of knowledge. They don't study to show themselves approved. They just go with what the norm is. And there's a lot of hearsay in Israel as well, man. There's a lot of hearsay. There's a lot of things which are not substantiated by any evidence or scripture, but it's, it's, it's a norm in Israel because you heard someone say it or you hear a lot of people say it. So you just feel like, okay, everyone else is saying it. So let's just say it like that. But you yourself haven't gone to research or investigate to make sure what you're saying is actually factual uh, and that's against the commandments for those of you that like to cry aloud about we want to keep the commandments it says thou shalt not bear false witness oh, that's right. so if you haven't seen something that you can prove is correct you shouldn't go and say it that is factual that's right that's right like this Yasha yasharala thing a lot of you haven't even gone to check out the word you're just saying it because you was told it means prince of the power but when you actually break the word down, Ya, Shara, Allah, He contends power. Then you're asking yourself, wait a minute, Yasha don't even mean, Yashara don't even mean prince. And then that's when the spirit of the heavenly father can work with you, man. You understand? The heavenly father, it says he dwelleth with none, but them which have wisdom. That's what wisdom of Solomon tells you. So if, if you die the death of a foolish man because you're following a multitude, you want to be accepted that's on your own head man you understand that's on your own head and that's what happen happens in israel all the time masses and masses of israelites die because they follow the crowd they're like sheep led to the slaughter okay anyway carry on uh on our well this is verse uh is leviticus 23 and verses 5 mm. In the 14th day of the first month right now in order to determine the 14th day of any month you need a crescent the heavenly father knows that too okay so don't be listening to anything anyone says about the moon is there but you can't see it you need an eclipse to show you is there that's is that that that's stupidity you understand that's something you tell kindergarten children man right and really, the most high needs to smack you around the coconut right. for believing in something like that. Because if he comes back and you tell him, oh, well, they said he was there, but we can't actually see it. Do you know how stupid you're going to look to the Heavenly Father, man? <laughs> it says the foolish shall not, uh, Psalms 5, right? Stand in that sight. The foolish shall not stand in his sight, you know? Okay, there you go. Carry on, Anna. Right. 
in the 14th day of the first month at even. At what? At, at even. even. And the reason why I said oh. at evening is because some of you count the days wrong. You count it according to Esau's cycle. But you keep forgetting the day begins in the evening. You see how the Most High is following that same process he started from the beginning? Because why? He created the earth in the evening. Mm. The first minute on the time clock of the world started in the evening, man. That's why he counts days in the evening, man. He's trying to follow his own cycle. He's not going to let captivity ruin his cycle. Okay? Because he's the one who delivered us into the hands of these heathens, man, that you see come passing us round about. And he's the same power that's going to deliver us out of it that's too. That's right. You understand? Yeah. That's why we're cleaving to him via these feast days, trying to keep the statutes to the best of our ability, yeah. even though we're faced with a lot of hindrances, but we're trying to jump these hurdles through the graces and mercies of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You understand? That's right. That's, right up. that's right. So read that. Right. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verses 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Is the what? Is, is the, the Lord's, Lord's Passover. Passover. So it's his Passover. Okay, and what does it symbolize? Escaping judgment. Uh, Escaping judgment. Because what did he do? He passed in Egypt and he slew the Egyptians, man. Uh, That's what Yahweh Shim Shai is about. Bringing judgment. Tells you in Psalms 37 and 28, Yahweh Shim Shai loveth judgment. Like I was telling the brothers yesterday, the way the Most High set this world up, someone needs to get their ass kicked. Someone needs to get their ass kicked. Because even if you go to the wilderness, the wild, you see how the, there's so many predators out there. You got the scavengers, you got the predators, and you got the parasites, man. And everyone's feeding on something. Because someone needs to be that, sorry to say, the bitch that needs to get righted out. And the Heavenly Father created us so the other nations can be our bitches so we can ride on them but we decided to go and join those bitches so we became bases like them so he he got upset so he put them over us but we've had enough of that man right because we know our place we know who we are now we know through the spirit and power of yahweh shimmy al shai that the lord is raising up the tabernacle of yahweh the tabernacle of aparayam which come together to make the two kingdoms coming together to rise up the the tribes of israel right. so we're with it man because we want to uh, see the end of this garbage uh, okay dogs come passing us round about the assembly of the wicked man you think we like seeing our women be sluts and whores and our men feminized as faggots running around with their pants sagging bullshitting we don't want to see that shit no more so we're gonna ride all the way till the wheels fall that's off with this one man right. uh, it's training, training back. That's right. That's right. okay and we ain't gonna mix our words as well mm. because we know our people are hard-headed they're ready to fight hey jacob wrestled the angel and he uh -huh. never let go uh -huh. and he wasn't gonna let go he was gonna keep wrestling till he died uh -huh. and the angel said let me go the day breaketh this is the spirit of our people very contentious people man you understand very contentious people that's why the lord said he's gonna cut off two thirds they must be destroyed man or we're never gonna get the kingdom yeah, go on up. Right. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Right. In and notice it says in the 15th, because what? The 14th day starts in the evening, but it carries on into the 15th mm. to get the complete 24 hour. And then that 15th day will begin in the evening mm. and carry on into the 16th day and eat into that to get a 12 hour to add to there's 12 hours of day there's 12 hours of night it tells you that in john okay there's nothing there's nothing hard about this man all right read right in the first day you shall have an holy convocation right so that's going to go into the pasach now jump to the next feast day which should be right. in um, 23 24. 24 24 yeah right this is leviticus chapter 23 and 24 Speak unto the children of Yashara Allah, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month. In the what? In the, the seventh day month, in the, the first month. day of the month. In the what? In the, the seventh month, month, in the first day of the month. In the what? In the seventh month, in the first day of the month. In the seventh month, in the first 
day of the month. Then shall be what? Shall ye have a Sabbath? Shall, no, wait, shall ye have a what? Shall, shall ye have a, a Sabbath? Sabbath? Shall ye have a what? Shall, shall ye have, have a Sabbath? Sabbath? Now, when we said that the Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that sent a lot of people berserk. They were like, how can you say that? We've lost time. We've lost touch with time. The only way we can tell when the Sabbath comes in is when the moon comes in. But mind you, do you know what the Heavenly Father showed us? The Sabbath comes every seventh month. Bring it up. The luck. first day of the month is always a Friday sundown to a Saturday sundown. Let if you know, think I'm luck. lying, follow the moon cycle and see. Peace, it didn't just happen this year It happened last year and the year after Peace, So it's not luck. a coincidence That the Sabbath always falls on a Friday sundown And if you go to West Africa That's how they, they, they call the Most High's Day Saturday is the Most High's Day Peace. In Nigeria, in Ghana They Peace. keep the same cycle So you can't come Even the Romans have it documented Saying the day of, of Saturn is the day that we attack these guys because that's when they keep the Sabbath. You can't, and that's the day that Esau tries to get you to work as well for more money and less time. And that's when all this hip hop culture came out, yeah, because that's what they use the Dame Dashes and the Jay Z's and the Kanye West's to get you in the clubs on Friday and Saturday, man. So if, if you don't understand that, you just deserve to get the Aidan Garazan. You understand? Because he can't wait to be unleashed on you peons, man. Because really, we're done talking, you know. We said fishing season is officially over. And look what's happening, man. You think you're going to catch any fish out there? Even uh, Nines came out with a track said, Cra Crabs in the bucket. That's right. Well, you can help yourself in the, in the, in the bucket full of crabs, man. Okay? If you got the strength to do that. Because, hey, crabs in the bucket is pretty heavy to, to carry, man. For those of you that, you know, are into fishing and stuff, crabs in a bucket is really heavy, man. Lead is easy to bear. You understand? So for, for you brothers that have been slumbering and sleeping, you sluggards, we ain't got time for that, man. We're marching on. We're marching on because we want to see what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to do with this thing, man. We want to see the latter end of this, man. You understand? Because we know we're in game, man. We're onto something. Yeah, you you might you want if you want to call it a false a delusion or whatever you want to call it, that's your business, yeah, man. Guess. We're marching on, man. You understand? We ain't getting held back. Because like I was saying to the brothers here, yeah, if Joshua took a sword and slew all those people that came out of Egypt, he would have got in the promised land quicker. The reason why they wandered for 40 years is because of the reps. The block-headed Israelites that didn't want to understand what the most I was trying to do. Anyway, carry on with the precept. Right. Mm -mm. This is verse 24. A memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. A what? A, a memorial, memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. It says a holy convocation. You understand? Because why? The first day of the seventh month is always on a Sabbath. So for those of you that forget when the Sabbath is, just wait for the seventh month to arrive and see what day it falls on, man. That's if you're looking for a crescent, not a dark moon that can only be visible by an eclipse, which you need a, a, a solar panel glasses to see. A telescope. A telescope. And need them, you see, it's ridiculous, man. But anyway, it's not a coincidence that the seventh month always falls on a Sabbath, man. So for those of you that don't know when the Sabbath is, the Heavenly Father shows you every seventh month because seven is a Sabbath anyway. That's why he said on the first day of the seventh month, ye shall have a Sabbath, man. And every time, it always falls on a Friday, so every single time. So is it a coincidence? It can't be a coincidence. He's trying to tell us something, but obviously our people are never paying attention, man. They're never paying attention. They're too busy whoring after different doctrines of devils, man. They got itching ears, you know? They're spiritual harlots, man. That's why there's so many churches in Israel. You got the Pentecost with it, the the Pentecostal, they love to sing and dance. You got the Methodists, you know, and then you got the Baptists, you got the Evangelists, you got the Roman Catholics, and so on and so forth, man. But we've had enough of that garbage, all right? We've had enough of it, and Yahweh Shem Yahushua has had enough of it. That's why he's flooding all these churches, destroying all these mosques. He's, you know, look at what he's doing to the Moabites, man. 
Cause. Look what he's doing to the Elamites, man. They need it, huh? Yeah? Right. You see how he's wrecking this place up? He's done talking. His action now. You oh. saw the angel that came in the cloud, uh, Hurricane uh, uh, Laura. That's what the Edomites called it. You saw that terrible uh, Malaak that was in the clouds. The big muscular guy. Yeah? You're going to see more sights like that, man. Oh. The Heavenly Father's bringing the game down. Oh. He's not hiding anymore. Oh. Oh. Because even Isaiah says, surely thou art a power that hidest thyself. The Most High refuses to be hidden. He's, he's making it as plain as day, man. He's making it plain upon tables now. Who he's dealing with and who he's not dealing with. It says, and ye shall know, I think it's Joel 2 and 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Yasharala. And I am the Lord, your power and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed, man. You understand? So that's what we're getting pumped up for. We ain't with all this, you know, prosperity doctrine and we shall overcome bullshit, man. When are we going to overcome this shit, man? You niggas want to protest. You want to run around like bitches with your tail wagging. Because really a bitch is a female dog, by the way. And this is a queendom for those of you that don't know. Yeah? You want to be protesting. What has the protesting brought you, man? Mm. Nothing but pain and sorrows and continue... Uh, uh, <laughs> slaughtering from your enemies continue and it's gonna continue because that's how the heavenly father wants it like wow. i said someone needs to be the big bad bitch that's gonna get righted on that's just how it is that's how we set the world up someone needs to get their ass kicked the reason why you're getting your ass kicked is because you don't know who your power is man okay so read that Leviticus chapter 23 and 25. Yeah. Ye shall do no servile work therein, right. but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now don't go and find a goat and a sheep and offer a sacrifice. Because we all understand we're under a new covenant now. You understand? Which is what? Grace. So Yahweh Shai was already offered as the sacrifice for us. So that part of the law, the sacrificial part of the law is done away with. Mm, mm, mm. Because Yahweh Shai has fulfilled the law. That's mm, why he said, mm. Think not I came to destroy the law, but I but came to fulfill it. it. That was his fulfillment. His crucifixion was him fulfilling it, nailing the sacrifice to the cross. But a feast day is still commenced though. Mm. You understand? So yeah, that's um is that the uh, Pentecost you're reading? Uh, yeah. That's the blowing of trumpet. Blowing Jump of trumpet. down to um I'm on 26 now. Yeah, 20. Yeah, did you read?